The following video will present solutions to the QCE Year 12 Mathematical Methods Sample Assessment 2020 Paper 2 Technology Active Questions 18 to 20 The technology utilised is the Casio CG50AU Graphics Calculator running Operating System 3.2 Unless specified otherwise, default settings have been used. Question 18 in this question, we are given a model for the amount of drug in a bloodstream. This model contains two unknown parameters, A and B. To find the exact values of A and B, I'll need to generate equations based on the fact that the drug was at a maximum of 120 milligrams when T equals to 2. Given that part of this information, the maximum, relates to the derivative M dash T, I'm going to start by finding this derivative. Using the product rule, m dash t equals a times e to the negative bt plus at times e to the negative bt times negative b. Given the common factor, this can be rewritten as a times e to the negative bt times 1 take bt. As the maximum occurs at time t equals to 2, m dash of 2 is equal to 0. From this, a times e to the negative 2b times 1 take 2b is equal to 0. As a is not equal to 0, or otherwise the entire model is reduced to 0, and e to the negative 2b is not equal to 0, therefore 1 take 2b must be equal to 0, and hence b equals a half. Now that the value of b is known, I can find a using the information that at time t equals 2, the amount is 120 milligrams, i.e. m of 2 equals 120. This allows me to write down a second equation. This can be rearranged to find that a equals 120 divided by 2 times e to the minus 1, which can be simplified to a equals 60e. Part B. To help me evaluate the reasonableness of my solution, I'm going to graph it using the graph app of my Casio CG50AU. Firstly, I'm going to enter the function as y1. Next, I will set a sensible view window for my graph by pressing Shift and F3. My domain should start at zero, as we are graphing time. But we have not been given information about the time for which our model is relevant. Perhaps a 12-hour time window would be a good place to start. My y-axis should start at zero and should go up to include the stated maximum of 120 milligrams. I'm going to choose a Y maximum of 130 and choose a scale of 10 on my Y axis. With those settings chosen, I'm going to press Execute and then press Draw to draw my model. From this graph, I can see that my model does not output negative values for T greater than or equal to zero. A good start. I see it increases rapidly at first as the drug is absorbed reaches a peak and then decreases as the body breaks the drug down. This fits with the scenario being modelled. The location of the maximum of my model can be found using the G-Solve menu. F5 opens this menu and F2 determines the maximum. We can see it is located at the point 2, 120. So, the model M of T is non-negative for T greater than or equal to zero and has a maximum at the point 2, 120. And so for those reasons, seems to be a reasonable fit for the scenario described. Question 19. To determine the probability that contestant B runs the course faster than contestant A, I can consider the variable D being the difference between their two times. 
Based on the information provided about the difference between two normally distributed random variables, I can say that my variable d will be normally distributed with a mean of 78 minus 80 and a variance of 10 squared plus 12 squared. This means that d has a mean of negative 2 and a standard deviation of square root 244 being the square root of the variance. With those parameters established, I can calculate the probability that b is faster than a, i.e. b records a lesser time than a, by calculating the probability that d, the difference b minus a, is less than zero. This calculation can be completed on my CG50 using the distribution menu in the Stats app. Select the normal distribution and perform a cumulative calculation. Set the data to variable by pressing F2. Enter a very small lower bound, an upper bound of zero, and the standard deviation and mean found earlier. This calculation returns a probability of 0.551. Question 20. Based on the information provided about the paddock that is to be bisected, I can define B as the X value of the point where fence B meets fence A, and define A as the X value of the point where the new fence meets fence A. As fence B is 4 kilometres long, the value of D is 4 at point B. That means that the natural log of 5B plus E subtract 1 is equal to 4. From this equation, I can obtain the value of B. Now that I know B, the total area of the paddock can be obtained by calculating the integral from 0 to B of the function D. This can be calculated using the math menu of the Run Matrix app of my CG50. This means that the integral from 0 to a, where the new fence is drawn, will be equal to half of this value. This equation can be solved using the CG50's equation solver. To enter an equation involving a definite integral, I need to press the Option key for more options, and then press F2 for Calc, and select F3. Enter the function first, arrow right to move through the integral template. Variable A is chosen by pressing alpha and then the key with A above it, which is the variable key. Now arrow right and complete the equation.
With the equation entered, I need to move the cursor down and enter bounds for the solution. In this case, 0 to 29.139. Move the cursor back up to the A equals line. To make the solver's job easier and quicker, I can enter a sensible initial guess for A. In this case, a value like A equals 15 seems sensible for a place for the solver to start its numerical process. Now move the cursor back up to the equals line, ready to solve. Unfortunately, the solve command, which is usually above F6, is nowhere to be found. If I press exit a couple of times, I back out to the solver's main command options, and now I can press F6. I may need to be a little bit patient for this equation. It is not uncommon for the solver to take 5 or 10 seconds to solve an equation, depending on the complexity of the equation, the breadth of the lower and upper bounds, and the helpfulness of the initial value provided. But here it is, A equals 17.243, and I can advise the farmer accordingly. There are other solution methods possible for this question. The point A can be found without finding the total area first. If we equate the area from 0 to A with the area from A to 29.19, we generate a different equation that can be solved for A. This equation, though slightly more complex, can also be solved using solver.